Hello, my name is Jose Barriga from Florida, and in this video, I want to show you a summary of the features of my Nissan Sentra 2004 SER Spec B converted to electric. I recorded the conversion, and this is video number 40. Uh, since I consider the car completed, I think it's the right time to make a summary of the conversion. You can see the rest of the videos at uh, sampaelectriccar.com. I want to thank my wife, Lady, for recording the videos. As of today, I have almost 400,000 views of my YouTube channel. I have uh, more than 1,200 uh, subscribers and almost uh, more than 100,000 likes. So I want to thank all the followers of this project. I know I have already inspired several conversions, which is very exciting. So let's start with the uh, conversion with the summary. Like with many other conversions, I started by removing the uh, electric, uh, the gasoline component like the motor, muffler, gas tank. And since I converted it, it's my daily commuters. I've been driving this for about three and a half years. Uh, it gives me about 70 um, miles per charge. It can go at uh, 90 miles per hour easily. It does zero to 60 miles per hour in 12 seconds and uh, it takes about seven hours to charge completely when it's fully discharged. I have several stickers identifying the car as an electric car. This is one, this is another, this is another, my stickers. And this is a sticker that I put or remove as I need if I want some uh, attention or not. I can tell, for example, when the stickers are on, I can see a few fingerprints in the, in the, in the window. Uh, and when I have the stickers on, I have some uh, thumbs up when I'm driving, so I remove them or leave them on if I want some uh, attention on. In the back, I have some stickers also that make uh, identify the car as an electric vehicle and my license plate, of course. So uh, let's start the tour in the trunk. This car was born electric with 26 volt lead acid batteries. And that didn't work very well for me. They weighed 1,400 pounds and they died really fast. And they need constant maintenance. So I upgraded to 24 kilowatts of uh, lithium batteries that I bought at EVTV from Jack, T Jack Rickard and Brian Noto. These batteries came from Israel uh, from the company Better Place and were originally used in a renal fluence. They fit very well in the car, and I use these covers to um, increase my trunk space. And I put a double cover on top of the batteries to support more weight. I have the batteries connected three in parallel and 16 on series for a total of uh, 48 batteries. This is a 120 volts nominal system. These batteries are bottom balance and I don't use a BMS or battery management system. I consider that I don't need one because since I bottle balance them, uh, they have not lost more than 0 0.02 volts uh, between them. Uh, that's remarkable. I don't think I've ever need a BMS. Now, I want to show you how, how well they fit in the trunk. I even got a little bit of space between the uh, on the sides for storage these are the same cells that Nissan Leaf uses now I decided to sell the batteries deep down in the uh, trunk so I'd be able to use some uh, space now uh, under I covered the supports with black PVC make them water and dust proof as you can see there is enough space under the car to clear any obstacle also as a pre precaution I install a little small de smoke detector on the top just in case now sometimes the place where I need to go is just a few miles from a charging station and since I install so much metal under the uh, batteries I start to install a trailer hitch to increase the functionality of my electric car. One of the things I use with this, for example, is a, is a bicycle rack. 
and also to drag a trailer that I'll show later. I figure if the car was good enough to drag 1400 pounds of lead acid battery, it would be good enough to drag a few pounds in a trailer. Okay, next I'm going to show you my battery charger and my charging port. Like with many conversions, I use my gas store and my gas compartment for the J1772 port for level 2 charging. And I still get my original NEMA conversion for the time that I use a cheap cable to connect to a regular 110 volts. I can use a cheap cable to connect here. The way I select which connector I want to use is with this switch. So the non-selected connector does not have live lines. My charger is an Elcom EFC 2400 and it's installed under the uh, car. I started outside for better ventilation and I put some covers to protect it from the water and then the dust. It charges at uh, 110 or 240 volts and it provides 250, 2500 25, watts of power. I get about 7 or 8 miles of uh, range for every hour that I charge. Now that charger has a LED that indicates the errors or the state of charge and since it's really difficult to read down there, I install a fiber optic that comes all the way through here so I can read that uh, status of charge or error from the charger. Now, let's take a look under the hood. As I said, I removed the gasoline com convert components and I uh, installed some covers to protect from dust and reduce the noise from the road. And as you can see, I have a trunk now. I have so much space left that I have a, a front like the Tesla Model S. You have to see the faces people make when they inter when I intentionally put groceries under the hood. Let me remove the covers to see the components. I usually remove these covers when I go to car shows. My plan is to install in this space another set of batteries to double my wrench. The motor I use is a net gain, impulse 9, double shafted, and uh, even though it's not strictly required, I have a small blower to cool off the motor and blow the dust, the dust from the brushes. I'm also using a solid one controller that can handle up to 1000 amps. I have a small cooling system from the, uh, to the controller that it starts automatically, but I can I can start it with this switch. The adapter place is uh, welded iron. It's not pretty like the ones made of aluminum, but it does the job. It works remarkably well. The power steering uh, electric pump is here on this side. And on this side, these capacitors are the replacement of my accessories batteries. Capacitors last forever and it's one less thing to maintain compared to a battery. Since there's no cranking or starter anymore, these capacitors are just used for absorbing the current peaks. Next to that is my DC to DC converter. This will charge the capacitors and will convert volts from 120 to 12 volts. This pretty much replaces the alternator in, what, in a gasoline car. Now in order to have power brakes, I install this electric vacuum pump and this is my additional vacuum reservoir. This is my uh, vacuum sensor and this will alert me if I lose the vacuum. This here is my emergency disconnect that I can pull from inside of the car in case of emergencies. The system fuse is here, the shunt for the amp meter is here. And this is my inertia switch in case of uh, accidents, it will disconnect the system. Finally, the compressor of the air conditioning and the controller are here behind the fender. This is a King Leo electric compressor and the condenser is installed here outside of the engine compartment to give me more space inside. As I said, I plan to install a second set of batteries for Nissan Leaf eventually. Now, in the front, 
there's since there's not, there not a huge radiator now to cool off, I decided to cover this vents and I install a Chevy Bolt air dam in the lower part. This things oh and I just left a little space uh, here for air for the uh, condenser and it's amazing by just doing this I gained about 10 to 15 percent of efficiency especially in highway I also replaced the lights with head xenon lamps and the uh, ring lights with uh, LED LED let me show you hopefully you can see the LED bulbs now, um, in this part, I install some LEDs to make it noticeable when the car is running because electric cars are so uh, quiet that I uh, may leave it on unintentionally. Now, let's take a tour inside the car. In the car, I kept the original pedal used in the uh, car computer. I figured if it was good enough for the car computer, it's good enough for my controller and so far so good. Now here's where I keep my network cable to, con to configure the controller. And uh, this is my heater. It's, this thing's over $10 it's, and it's amazing how much heat this can generate. It goes here. I'd say these things are good for up to 40 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, for here in Florida is pretty much enough. Now on the air conditioning controls, I kept the original uh, AC controls. This is not mechanic anymore, this is connected to a potentiometer, connected to the AC controller and this switch is also connected to the controller. This just basically tells the um, controller to make the compressor work faster or slower. This is my emergency disconnect as well. As I said, I can just pull it up to disconnect the system in case of emergencies. This is my JLD404 that I use to uh, measure ampere hours, time connected, amperes, and voltage. This is amazing how well it fits in the ashtray. In the old ashtray the space it looks like it was made for this now um, the uh, dashboard the original um, indicators are working pretty much and um, for the most part they're working fine this is the power steering and it has a positional sensor and a timer so it will disconnect the uh, power steering when the car is going straight. Let me show you. And when I'm going straight, it just disconnects the uh, power. Now, this is my vacuum meter gauge that will beep when the I lose the vacuum. Uh, when the vacuum goes below a programmable value. Um, let me show you how it works by exhausting the vacuum in the brakes. My program, program is... This alarm is very valuable to me since there's no way to uh, brake with the engine anymore. And direct systems, direct uh, voltage systems like this one, do not have regenerator braking. And if something uh, fails, like for example the fuse for the vacuum pump burns, I want to know right away if something's wrong. Here Tampa is pretty much flat, um, but uh, if in a place with a lot of hills, I think that, that's a must. Um, now let me show you the, the uh, trailer that I use for the... Uh, let me show you the trailer that I use for the electric car in case of functionality. And I'll show you later a uh, video when I pick up my lawnmower in this trailer. Uh, basically I use this trailer for for driving stuff with my electric car. Um, I think it's time to go for a drive. Come with me. Okay, here we go. Um, I must say that I love to drive this car. I'm very happy with the conversion and it drives really well. 
it has the feeling of a much more expensive car because it's fake white and it does by brake especially like uh, four cylinder cars um, in this conversion I decided to keep the clutch so I can change shift easily even though uh, because of the great torque of electric motors um, I drive in third shift all the time uh, I don't really need to idle in red lights so I can just leave the speed on it drives like an automatic uh, I just don't need to change gears much uh, more often except like when I go to the highway um, I start in third, sh third shift um, for example uh, it's in third shift right now and it's just starting uh, without being a race car it has excellent performance it needs very little maintenance and it was very satisfactory to build uh, to drive a car that I could work for myself uh, I must say that I did everything in this car except for a little help I needed in the uh, adapter plate and in the uh, uh, hoses for the AC which uh, you need a high pressure equipment for those um, the uh, indicators in the dashboard they all work very well I want to show you them um, I originally have my uh, indicators here in the pillar and uh, they were analog, analog up meter and bulb meter and the problem was that they were blocking my view here and I removed them when I installed my JLD 404 which is now really uh, accurate and very good way to know my state of charge um, now I'm going to show you uh, power steering when the power steering is going straight after a few seconds it just turns off and when I turn It'll, it'll turn on automatically with the positional sensor and a timer and since there's not much weight on the uh, front anymore I don't really need to uh, use the power steering that much um, I can just uh, drive with the power power steering off most of the time I just use it mostly when I park uh, my current projects are to install an electric power steering and I'm using also Arduino boards to try to fix the uh, original gasoline uh, indicator and the temperature indicator and I'm also trying to fix the, uh, the cruise control with an Arduino board uh, they also the other project is to get another set of uh, Nissan Leaf batteries and put them on the front to increase my range um, and I think that's it thanks for watching my name again is Jose Barriga this is a summary of my electric car and you can see the rest of the videos at tampaelectriccar.com and uh, happy to drive this car very excellent uh, experience driving this car excellent performance and thank you for watching bye what I uh, was telling you earlier about the uh, trailer, I built a trailer hitch for my uh, little car and then I can use it to uh, drag around things. I just bought this thing so uh, as you can see you can drag weights and I increase the use the uh, functionality of my electric car by a lot by uh, being able to pull things out. It, it, it works great even pulling things out. Let me show you.